Hey everybody! Welcome to another uh, Staples Guide. You uh, as a kind of a, uh, it's here to expand on our expanded deck guides where we're going to be pointing at cards and be like, instead of us talking about why this card is good, check out this staple video down below. Uh, and we're on the Survivor ones. We've done Guardian, Seeker, Rogue, and Mystic. You can find elsewhere on the channel. Uh, but here we are talking about the Survivor staples. Um, why don't we just dive right in and Travis? You yeah. can take the first one. Oh, it's not you. That's very generous. You just... Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Lucky. So, Lucky, uh, the base level one. Uh, they're all good, but like the first and the third ones are really good. Mm -hmm. um, base level is, is your experience. One, to play fast. You play when you would fail a skill test. You get plus two to your skill value for a test. It's also a fortune, which has, like, <laughs> it matters and why... Rex Murphy can't play it. That's it. <laughs> don't look at me <laughs> don't look at me um anyway yeah this is really good because like instead of failing a test you don't mm -hmm. and that's good uh for two experience you can have it replace itself which is like it doesn't seem like much but it is pretty good and a lot of times it's it's a nice quality of life upgrade it is usually worth two experience mm -hmm. but then the level three version is like oh my god costs zero experience um and, I mean, sorry, zero money, three experience. <laughs> it's just better. Because zero experience, it's just a better card. Yeah. Why aren't you playing this one? It's still fast, and you can play when any investigator at your location would fail a skill test, and then they get plus three, and they draw a card. I actually really, really like this upgrade, like this card design, where it's like just so much better than level two one, because it is a card for survivors. Yes, yeah. As opposed to level two one, which we played in like... Yeah, any, anybody can play that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like the the level one one really really good because you don't you can just put your deck and then you know if you fail you don't instead it helps you go over some of those big modifiers like the forgotten age starts with a minus five in the bag, mm -hmm. um, and then the level three one is like just so good you don't have to plan at all you just have to be at their location you just kind of do things and if something goes awry you're like nah man yeah it's like because I know like uh, will to survive exists which we slight is like red's mm -hmm. water protection but this is also like red's water protection right like gotcha. you just like if someone would fail you just say don't fail right just don't fail yeah. and then and like so if you're like trying to like on the defense most of the um, tokens in the bay or most of the tests are gonna be like three and three should be enough to like most of the tests are three and like with the chits in the bag, you know, they're usually at minus two, maybe minus three. Mm -hmm. This is enough to get them to pass that test if it's really bad for them. And again, if they're actually trying to do something, they should be like up to. Yep. And like, even if they, even on, especially on standard, even if you hit like a minus five, you still can just make them pass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing to be aware of with Luckies, this is kind of like one of the weird Arkham rules that like you only know if you've kind of read the FAQ from front to back. People on the internet have yelled at you about it. They, they did yell. I, I, learned, I learned by being yelled at, so I'm going to save you from being yelled at. Um, so you don't, when you would fail a skill test, your mo the modifier, um, if it's below zero, it stays below zero. Uh, even though, like, when the test ends, your skill becomes zero because, uh, like, when a test ends, your skill can't yeah, be you can't, below zero. You can't, like, overfail. Um, but when it's checking for when lucky turn. is, <laughs> uh, when you're checking when lucky is, like, when lucky is played, if you are minus two uh, and you were, like, like if the test result was like was two you needed to get two to pass uh you'll if you play your lucky you'll only go to zero you don't actually like get out of it which i think is like a bad rule in my opinion just because it doesn't work for like how you assume it would right it's like intuitive yeah. yeah it's kind of like some of Salas's stuff yeah with the returning them every time i've like thought about playing Salas, i'm like yeah but i'd have to like ask just <laughs> which skills work and yeah then, nah. um but just something to be aware of. Lucky's still fantastic, um, and like it's a great card. But just know that if you're put in the negatives from the modifier, Lucky can get you out of it. So, uh, and that's another reason why Lucky three is good because like if the test was two, and they got to minus one, it will save them. So just more is good. All right, Bryn, I'm gonna pass this one to you. Oh, a rabbit's foot. Uh, nice. Yeah. So it's just a one-costed asset uh, takes up your your accessory slot 
as a reaction, after you fail a skill test, you can exhaust it to draw a card. It just kind of takes the sting out of failing yeah. tests. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the upgraded one, it's uh, after you fail a skill test, you exhaust it and search the top X cards of your deck for a card and draw it. Shuffle the remaining cards because Fantasy Flight hates the concept of stacking decks mm -hmm. uh, or knowing where your cards are in a deck. Yeah. Uh, X is the amount you failed by. Yeah. So this also will not play into the negative. You can only fail by as much as the value of the test is. So if you're testing brain three, and you got one brain, and you draw a minus five, you failed by three. Yeah. Uh, still, very strong. Uh, this the second one is much better if you're looking for specific pieces of your deck. Otherwise, you know, it's free just, cards is free cards. It's just a generic yeah. economy thing. Um, and like you might be the kind of like. But what if I don't fail the tests? I don't gain value. Yeah, like, that's good. Then it doesn't winning. matter. That's then good. Matter. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> winning. It's like one of those things where it's rather like, why would I choose this if I never fail? And then it's like, congratulations, you've won the game. And there, it, yeah. the the I, threshold I to like the doom threshold was still four away from advancing because yeah. you passed every test. I yeah. spent the money in a card to play this card. I got no value for it because I've just passed every test yep. I make. Like. Yeah, <laughs> it's like one of those things too. Like with survivors, um, you you're expected to fail. That is kind of like their thing, um, because you know they have value from it, right? Like like that's uh, garbage. Um, it's just uh, it's one of those things that just you're gonna have happen, and it's nice to have like a little like don't worry, you failed, but you're gonna be okay, right? Have a card. We love you. Congratulations. Very generous. All right. Mine. It would be fun if I just passed it to each of you guys. I never talked about one this week. That would be very funny. Yeah. All right, but this one's mine. Uh, I figured I should talk about Pete Sylvester. Uh, so Peter Sylvester. Uh, it, both of these are in the Dumbwich Legacy Deluxe Box. It's a three-cost uh, ally. One damage, two horror. You get plus one foot, and after your turn ends, heal one horror from Pete Sylvester. Uh, and then the upgraded one is level two. You get plus one foot and plus one brain. The two defensive stats. And then after your turn ends, heal one horror from Petal Sylvester, and now he has three horror on him. Uh, I love this ally because um, it gives you very relevant stats, and you just don't die, right? Like, what's better than dying in this game? Not dying. Not dying. Most things are better yeah. than dying. Um, so, <laughs> in your opinion, there's only one thing, not dying, dying, and then drawing cards for me. It's in that order. Um, but, like, uh, Pete is just boring, but he's just like very powerful um, because just like he doesn't do anything. Like a lot of allies, as they're starting to get more in the game, actually like do things, right? But Pete just has stats on a stick. The three cost is like one of the best you'll find for those two stats. And like those are relevant stats. And then like you just don't die. Someone once commented, like, why would I play Pete? Like, what do you like? Not. <laughs> Right, let, me, okay, just let me find the words. They said, like, not dying is not winning, which is true, right? If you that don't is something die, we you say a lot that, like, healing is bad because it doesn't advance your game plan. It just, like, keeps you from. Like, you're static, but the game keeps moving, yeah. as opposed to you moving. But Pete is good because he doesn't require any kind of investment past the initial one. And not only does he keep you from dying, but he also gives you the stats to, like, advance your game plan. Yes. Like, yeah. Also, if you're dead, you can't win. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. So yeah. like, yeah. He he doesn't ask. He asks for literally just three resources in your ally slot, and like he's just gonna keep you alive. Plus, you get the infamous Pete Cleaver gone. Though. It's true. Yep. Yep. It's spoken about in hushed tone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see Pete with his cleaver? All right, Travis, I'm going to throw this I'm next not, one to I'm you. I'm sure that guy's okay. Yeah, he's not. Okay. He, he sure is handsome, though. Uh, this is resourceful. It's from the Path to Carcosa, the Lungs Box. Uh, it is a skill. It is innate, the survivor trait. Uh, Fair skills. It commits for a book, a fist, and a foot. And if this skill test is successful, you get to choose any bird card not named resourceful, otherwise known as red cards, uh, in your discard pile and add the chosen card to your hand. Uh, this card is like, you gotta, so you're doing stuff in the game, you're using your book, your fist, or your foot for something, and presumably if you're playing Resourceful, which is a red card, you can play other red cards, and you should be. So this is always just like, it's plus one to a test, and then if you pass, which like you should be playing to, 
you get to do any of the things you've already done again. Mm -hmm. It's it's so good. So like, <laughs> it's even more value if you like get back high experience cards. Yeah. Because you paid a big investment to get those, and then you just get more of them. Yeah. Because this one doesn't care about experience. Like another one does no. later in the list. Can we do. Uh, video about the worst cards to versatile into your deck. Uh, <laughs> Just if, you, if you guys want that, let us know. Uh, <laughs> so um, with uh, Resourceful as well, like really, if you can run red, like we talk about in these staples a lot where like you need a reason to not run them, right? And so like say for example, you can hit red. You need a reason to not run Lucky. Like, there's times where you might not want to play Rabbit's Foot or Pete Sylvester because there's other options, right? But they, they're so ubiquitous, they fit in any red deck. If you're a survivor, you're going to play Lucky. And then if you have access to Luckies, you might as well put the Resourcefuls in because you now can get back your Luckies. Like, right? there, are, there are a couple of investigators who might not want Resourceful. Like, a lot of min decks don't play enough red cards. Mm -hmm, that's true. And sometimes, like, Preston can't pass tests. Yeah, but you can throw it at somebody else's test. You can. Uh, this is also true in yeah. very... Like, you don't no think one about on, that, but you no can. one on your team can pass one of those three tests, like, man, maybe you should you guys go back to that, the drawing board and start the campaign. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, that's pretty fair. Yeah, there's always there there is always cases, but I mean like it's like pretty yeah. niche though. Such as Patrice, yeah. can't you do anything right? Yeah, Patrice would be pretty. She, but I mean, honestly, she like kind of doesn't fit in this. She's like she's gonna have the stars, but there's gonna be like an asterisk. Next the next to video them. is for her. Yeah, um, but like uh, it, this card, like even just Lucky's, you'll get the value out of this guy. If you have more than like four other red cards in your deck, you should find resources. Yeah, them. like there like, it, it'd be. I don't say this often, but it would be the wrong decision if you have, like, four more red cards. card is so good. Mm -hmm. All right, Bryn, I'm going to throw this one to you. You're a master of this one. Take hey. That. Yeah, so this, this card really sucks. <laughs> um, it's a scale that can be committed to any type of test. Max one committed per test. If this skill test fails, the performing investigator draws two cards and gains two resources. I shouldn't say it really sucks. It's very comparable to a level five purple card. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you commit it and then you draw the blue token and you're like, God damn. But also like, okay, I guess. I suppose. Yeah, anyway, this this one is uh, an integral part of the fail by archetype. But even outside of it, it's still very strong. If you are never facing tests that you do not feel like you can just pass, then uh, you're hey, you're like, well done, Good. well done. Yeah. Um, but at some point, the game is going to throw a test at you that your investigator is not good at. And you can just throw this at it and be like, yeah, okay, give me two turns worth of stuff, though. Yeah, or alternatively, alternatively give it to someone else. Like, your green player draws a brain check they need to make, and you're just like, don't worry, I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty solid economy painting? card no. for, like, Guardians, too, where they can be like, I have a garbage book, I'll just throw an investigation yep. test away for... When my actions can start to take monsters and be killed, and you're like, yeah, sweet. Now, you might be asking, but Justin, what if I pass the test? Well, congratulations, you you're passed winning, the you're test. You're winning the yeah. game the, the traditional way. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're a guardian doing, like, a book test. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, with no clues, you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> that one feels bad. But. Yeah, no, that, one, that one does feel kind of bad. Yeah. But there will, there will be at some point a test that you probably can't pass and you could throw this at it to get more cards and more resources and hopefully find a way to get around whatever problem you were facing. Yeah, and as you're just starting out too, this one is available in the Stella deck, which means like, it, obviously Stella has that extra bonus from failing, but mm -hmm. it's a good, any card that like the staples that exist in like the core set or an investigator deck are easy to get a hold of and uh, you know, you'll get a yeah. lot of use out of them. Yeah, this card is like, obviously if you're playing the fail by archetype and you throw this at a test and then you get to play look what I found anyway. Mm -hmm. Pretty sweet. Yeah. And you're living the high life. All right, let's go to this one, which is Scrounge for Supplies. This one's kind of like resourceful, but you know, not as good. Still a very strong card, especially in a level zero deck, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's a zero cost event. Uh, choose a level zero card in your discard pile, add the chosen card to your hand. Uh, this one, like as we were talking, earlier uh with s this card like i think if you can run red uh and you should put this in your level zero deck like even min because this card is just your third and fourth copy of deductions for example yeah right uh 
This card does get outclassed later in the campaign. I usually always get these out by like scenario five or six at the absolute latest. Mm -hmm. Unless there's level zero cards that are strong enough you want to bring back. But more often than not, you'll be out of that point by then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is worth noting that your investigator's unique asset or signature asset is not level zero. It has no level and therefore cannot be returned by scrapped for supply. Another one of those weird rules that exists. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I get it. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, like a lot of them are intended to be played like one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, this card, yeah, it's pretty simple. There's not much to say about it. Just getting back more of your level zero cards, especially in the early game, is nice. Early campaign. All right, this next one, let's all just do it together, because it's the last one. Nightmare Bobble. Nightmare Bobble. It's a gods. <laughs> okay, I'll start. Nightmare Bobble is an item charming curse. Uh, item is one of those that could pop some matter. It's level three, um, and it costs one resource to play, and commits for a brain in a while. Do I go now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, after Nightmare Bobbles enters play, search your bonded cards for three copies of Dream Parasite and attach them to Nightmare Bobble. When it leaves play, set a, uh, put a set of, set each a... I, I, I fricked up. I fricked up. I never, like, re read this card aloud. So when it leaves play, set each attached Dream Parasite aside out of play. The Dream Parasite... It's bonded, and while it is in your hand, you must commit it to the next skill test you perform if able. This skill con's icon subtract from your skill value instead of adding to it. If this skill test fails, take one damage and one horror. And burn the best part, the good part of the card. Uh, it's got a reaction effect that says when you reveal the red chaos token, you get to shuffle an attached dream parasite into your deck and just cancel that token. Wow. So, admittedly, a lot of you watching are probably like, this is a weird choice for a survivor staple. But so I don't think it is. It's because, so good. Yeah, it, it, no, apart even just the fact that it's, like, so good, the fact that this can just fit in any survivor deck. Mm -hmm. Because, well, level three, you obviously. You just put it in any deck and makes it better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, one does occupy a very similar headspace to the rabbit's foot, where, you know, what if I never trigger it on things that matter? And hey, yeah. good, 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 you're doing good. Because it's nice to just say no to the autofail token. Um, my first time playing with it is in the um, Insmith Conspiracy that is currently running, and it is powerful. Uh, you won't play it, like, this one is less like um, some of the other stuff where, like, you know, you need a reason not to play with these staples. I think this one's just good enough and ubiquitous enough that it can fit into any Survivor deck that can yeah, run it. I do, I do think do well. you, you want to have a reason that you're not playing this, but that reason can be anything. Like, I'm playing Rabbit's Foot and I don't want to buy a Relic Hunter. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah, sure, that's a reason. That's a reason. Yeah. Um, or I'm playing a fail by deck and I don't actually care about the red token. All right, good. That's a reason too. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's less scrutiny than being yeah. like I'm not running lucky. Why? Yeah, because yeah, because I'm running. I don't want to buy another relic hunter. It's yeah. like what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's so. not how any of this works. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, just tr like and even though yes, the fail by like the dream parasite seems scary. It's really actually like not that bad because apart from like you know. Survivors actually have pretty good willpower. They're pretty good in the Mythos phase, too. And that horror is just going to go on your Pete Sylvester that's in play anyway, and then he's going to heal yep. it right off, right? No. Survivor, survivors are generally, as a rule, quite resilient to damage, mm -hmm. uh, and fail, as well as failing tests. So, like, if the Dream Parasite makes you fail a test, you knew which one it was going to be, though. Yeah. And then you take some damage, you can probably manage that, too. Yeah, one of the big things this does for survivors, I think, is like a lot of their power comes from like one shot ish effects. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And just as an example, top of my head, the skills like brute force and um, sharp, sharp vision. vision. And while that's not really a problem for some investigators like Silas, like you can just, it, it almost guarantees that that's going to go off, right? Yes. So, be able to protect those big, high value plays that you have as survivor, because a lot of the time you're just scraping by. But, uh, Getting those big, big testers is important. Yep. Yeah. And for the really weird Bryn comment, I actually have one. In Silas, it could just be an unexpected courage. You can just pull it back and get plus two on a test. Yep. Wow. All right. Well, that is it for our uh, Survivor Staples. Next week, we're going to be doing our Neutral Staples. It's going to be a nice, quick video for that one. And then 
We're not gonna do the, we've been saying for a while, we were gonna do the expanded guides when this was done, but we are going to wait until all of the cards for Edge of the Earth were revealed. That's what we talked about, right, Travis? I'm yeah, not I'm just kidding. talking on my butt here, okay. Uh, so we're gonna wait until those are done because then we just can get those and not be like, oh my God, you don't have these Edge of the Earth cards and we're like already behind. So in the meantime, we have a few more archetype videos we're going to be finishing up. Uh, and then after that, and once Edge of the Earth is out, we're going to be just like Kurt, going right and getting those done. Uh, and I'm looking forward to them. They should be fun. Be mad at Fantasy Flight, not us. Yeah. I mean, you can be mad at us. We're... No, we're too late. Oh. Bye, YouTube.